Well, I do, Donald. Of course. Uh, who is it? Uh, anyone I know? No, I don't think so. Someone local? Really? He's a pharmacist, actually. I met him while dealing with work. He's nice, you'd like him. Mm, I'm sure. I've always had a soft spot for pharmacists. What is in that box there? Let's have a look. Oh, it's one of Ronnie's. Oh, she's beautiful. Perfect. Oh, well, almost. What happened? Mother's taken against her. We've had to separate them. Oh, yes? Mm. She's going to need hand-rearing, I'm afraid. There's no problem providing you know how to do it. Yeah. I suppose I'll have to get Paddy Riley to do it. He can do that sort of thing blindfold, can't he? Yes, if he has the time. I mean, he's on 24-hour call, isn't he? Yes. Yes, I hadn't thought of that. And also, you'd need someone with uh, some medical experience. Hmm. Which leaves Ethel or me? And Ethel will flake out after a couple of nights without sleep. Oh, let me look after her, Donald. I'll make a good job of it. You'll see. I was hoping to talk to you about it over that drink tonight. You absolute rat, Donald Turner. You brought her here for me, didn't you? Something like that, yes. And you put me through that charade. Mm, yeah. Are you sure you're prepared to take on the responsibility? She's a very valuable animal. Of course I'm sure, and not because she's valuable. Because she's beautiful. Sure, sure, sure. Look at them over there. They're overgrown turkey looking things. That feels low. Is it weird? Oh. <laughs> They're lovely, aren't they? Here, come on, I want to say hello to them. Oh, poor things. They look half starved. Here, come on, come on, eat this, my little love. Come on, come on. Come on. Marvellous go, Urea. 25 miles an hour across the plains of Argentina. One of a family of flightless birds known as ratites. If I've got my fact right. Uh, what have we got here? And who do you think you are? I'm the head keeper, ma'am. And I'd be asking you and the gentleman here not to be feeding the animals, if you don't mind. Why shouldn't I? This one looks like it's on its last legs. No, no, uh, let's do what the man says. Uh, uh, it's against the rules, you see, ma'am. Reg, we'll just tell him to push off. Will you be having a word with the lady, sir? Or shall I? Do you know who we are? Go on, Reg, go on, tell him. This is Reg Downey of Downey Developments. And I'm Patrick Riley, head keeper of Manford Park. And the only development I'm interested in is... Oh! It blew my neck! What, look? What's happened? That thing, it's eaten my pendant! <laughs> See what I mean? Spoil an animal with food, and this is what happens. You get it back, Julia. I'm sorry, ma'am. He seems to have made a meal of it. Oh dear, can't you fish it out or something? Oh, I don't think uh, Oscar would take too kindly to that idea. Oh no, sir. You stupid old buffer. You get it back, Julia. No, 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 no. Come on, love. It's only that silver plate thing. We want it with me. Shut up, Reg. Now you tell him I want my pendant back. Well, it's only worth four quid, love. I'll tell you what, I'll buy you another one. As many as you like. How's that? Shut up, Reg. Now I'm not leaving here without my pendant. And I mean it. Oh, dear. We'll have to have it back, Mr. Riley. I'm afraid it's a bit late for that, sir. It's inside him by now, do you see? Digesting with his worms by now. Oh! I'll tell you what I will do, though, eh? I'll have the vet over, see what he has to say. I mean, a cheap bit of metal like that could damage a valuable creature like Oscar. And that could cost you more than four quid if it turns nasty, I promise you, sir. Where is it, 
then. I'm sorry, Mrs. Downey. Well, don't you sorry me. I want my pendant back. It seems to have gone down into, uh, into his stomach. Well, catch it up, then. I can't do that. Can't you stick your hand down his throat or something? Look, how would you like to have a hand stuck down your throat? Did you hear what he said, Reg? Look, Phyllis, look, let's leave it. I told you I'd get another. Oh, you let him do this to me. Steal my pendant and do naught about it. Please, Lord. Shut up. Look, you. Can't you open that screw anything up, then? I'm sorry. There's nothing to be done until the pendant has passed through the system. Don't be disgusting. There's no alternative. I suggest you come back in a week or two. We'll have it for you then. I want my pendant now. Phyllis, look, let's do what the veterinary says. I'd listen to your husband if I were you, ma'am. It's sound advice he's given you. Go. Oh. <laughs> well, Oscar, <laughs> do you enjoy that, eh? Please for yourself. <laughs> Most of it. Made my day, that did. <laughs> yes, um, I've got a nice little job for you, Perry. I want you to be sure and spot that pendant when it turns up. Ah, uh, oh, a right handful there, Mrs. Downey. Fancy making all that fuss about a four quid pendant. Right, Oscar. You and me are going to have a nice little chat about the workings of your insides. Come on. <laughs> she seems to have settled in very well. Yes, the feed formula suits her. Good. I deliberately kept the carbohydrate level low. Too high and it's not all absorbed. Is that dangerous? Hmm. Well, the residue gets shunted into the colon and feasted on by enterobacteria. Ugh. Causes diarrhea, which is a real danger in infant cats. Well, Rosie's in perfect health. Rosie. Her name mean picture of health. Oh, dear. Uh, how are you coping with the sleepless nights? I love it. Rosie loves it. We're a mutual admiration society, aren't we? I'll do. My word, Ben, you do look smart. What is it? Bank manager? Creditors meeting? Worse. Having tea with that shower from the council. Tea? Hmm. Well, I explained the problem to Anne, and she arranged this tea. She'll be doing the honours, of course. Yes, Ethel. Yep, put him on. Honey? Are you sure? For heaven's sake, find him and get him into your office. I'll see you there in a minute. Trouble? Yeah. Paddy's found an empty car in the lion enclosure. Someone's taken to wandering around in there. Oh, hell. That's all we need is some fool getting himself eaten. Mr. Bishop, huh? call from Lady Anne. She'd like you to be present when the councillors arrive. Milk and sugar, Mr. Denby? Please. I read your little piece on the history of our village site. Oh. Very interesting indeed. Oh, well, I try to do my little bit for our local heritage, you know. <laughs> it forms a very important service, reminding us of all those little things we take for granted. Couldn't agree more, Lady Anne. Oh, thank you. Mr. Brady, milk and sugar? Oh, uh, easy on the milk and a free hand with the sugar, please, your ladyship. Oh, ta. How's business, Mr. Brady? Picking up. Mustn't grumble. Yes, I've seen the visitors cramming your shop. Grockles. Pay anything you ask and then pinch what they want the minute your back's turned. Oh, dear. <laughs> Still, I'm sure you're delighted with the business. Oh, I... 
Oh, Mrs. Younger, I keep meaning to drop you a note. We've put aside an attic full of jumble for the community center fund. That's the most 